like to make a quick admission here. When I saw Aqua as the first ingredient of this sunscreen, I just jumped at it. Because I knew what I was suffering from by using the other two sunscreens. These are the two sunscreens which I had been using before the Domoco Ultra Matte Sunscreen Gel SPF 60 as well as the Re-Equil Ultra Matte Dry Touch. They, they're both silicone based while this one is water based. So my skin is dehydrated and you know the moisture barrier is generally compromised. Um, so in the unboxing of this video you would have seen that I'm really happy with the texture it, it's uh, maybe you know this is something which would do me really well when um, you know maybe maybe in summers but in winters and autumn this one and so did this one there's not much of a difference by the way between the Reequil and the Dermaco uh, ultra matte sunscreen gel it would it would feel like those sunscreens are attracting some particles on my face and then that would make my face itchy and when I itched at my skin um, in my nails basically in the tips of my nails the product would come out so that was like it, it made me cringe you know and when I received this I wanted to throw away those things but I would not do that what I would do I would probably keep them in my aisle texture is just like I wanted it to be. It's watery so it's gonna not let my skin get dehydrated. Hopefully. I was really missing this texture that's why I jumped at this cream. Hey friends! So I received this cream yesterday. It was I think in four to five days of ordering the cream that I received it. Um, so like the cream moved from Chandigarh and it had to reach Himachal Pradesh to me and it took four or five days for that. So yeah, you can kind of guess the shipping speed. Um, not that great. Though they sent it via Blue Dot, but still. and. Uh, after applying the discount code, so basically this is a uh, maximum retail price at 460, but I paid 368 for it uh, after applying the discount code of RQL20. And uh, so I'm really happy. I know this doesn't have the best of ingredients. I mean, the second ingredient itself is octocrylene and the maximum percentage advice for octocrylene is 10%. I don't know what is the percentage in which they have added it. It is also a photosensitizer. That is, it increases production of free radicals on skin when exposed to UV light, in turn increasing the risk for skin cancer and premature aging. So as I said, the ingredients are not very great. Other than that, it also has fragrance, which is not a good thing. So while the second ingredient is octocrylene, which is a photosensitizer, and it's going to create free radicals, but at the same time, they've gone ahead and said that this sunscreen is for sensitive and acne-prone skin. So I guess we'll really have to see how it does. It does have some good ingredients too, like Tris Biphenyl Triazine and Tinosorb S. So regarding Tris Biphenyl Triazine, it is, uh, it, it's really good at absorbing UVB and UVA2 rays. So UVA2 is a spot that most filters miss. So that way is, this one is uh, more useful. And it is also highly photostable and has high SPF performance even at low concentrations. Tinosorb S is allowed in concentrations up to 10% though I think here in this sunscreen it's probably much lower than 10% but it is also great at protecting against UVB and UVA rays both long and short and it is also um, quite photostable I think. So Bimotrazenol and Tris Biphenyltriazine Nano are these are the kind of ingredients that we want to have in appropriate concentrations in our sunscreens, chemical sunscreens these days. 
one cannot really completely read the uh, uh, label also and you know completely determine what a product is ultimately going to do for you a product label always um, the ingredients list always tell you what a product is capable of doing it doesn't tell you what it's definitely going to do okay so um yeah i mean we are all just just like we are all helping each other in understanding products better in reading labels better and in you know giving our two cents or oh, oh, this product did this for me so just because a product did this for me doesn't mean it's going to do the same for you or vice versa so yeah keep that in mind and now i'll show you how this one sits on my skin though it says it's for oily skin but my skin is dry to though i do i have applied some moisturizers on top i'll try to link them whichever ones i can I mean the consistency is far better than the other two sunscreens I've been using lately. It's just slightly boiling up, but that's probably because I've put a moisturizer underneath. which has silicones in it so this happens with moisturizers that have silicones and products which have silicones if you put something anything which also has silicones on top of it then there's a chance of boiling up so what i can do is that um i don't know if you can see the balls on my hand yeah You can see that. So those are the balls. So what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna uh, minus out that moisturizer. It's the one by Dermy Texture. Just show you. NMF Natural Moisturizing Factor Skin Barrier Cream. This is the one which I had used and it has um um silicones in it. just use the balm which i made in place of a moisturizer that that moisturizer i think if that should do or i'll have to find some other moisturizer if i want to use this sunscreen i'm actually um till now i'm like pretty happy with the effect of the sunscreen it's like hydrating which i really like but let's see how i feel over the coming days and throughout the day today you know maybe i should apply a bit more because i applied less just a bit more it's just boiling up that's it rest of it is fine As for now, um, it really leaves absolutely no white cast of any sort on my face. In fact, the other two sunscreens which I mentioned, um, they were the ones, the silicone-based ones, which were leaving a little bit of a white cast. Nothing major, but yeah, yeah. So this one absolutely leaves no white cast. Nothing of that sort.